Light travels to us, across galaxies, and within our solar system. We're seeing the sun in the extreme ultraviolet. Here, what you'll see is a solar flare. Light interacts with matter at the subatomic level. When we put electricity into gas, you get different characteristic colors. Atoms emit very specific colors of light. We can use light as an investigative tool. We think that it was made by Paul Revere. Even to probe the mysteries of our past. To understand how light interacts with matter, we have to understand the structure of atoms and how their electrons behave. I'm Wayne Stratman. The work I do as an artist relates to chemistry in that I am mixing gases and various vapors together in various proportions and pressures, and then exciting them, giving them energy, specifically looking for visual effects, kinetic effects. By varying the pressure, I can get a variety of different effects and motions. I can make it move like lightning, or I can just make it a soft, subtle glow. When we put electricity into gas, depending on the gas, that gives a characteristic single color to the gas. Neon, orange, red, and argon, that pastel purple. In the case of xenon gas, you get the characteristic color of this purplish blue. Well, I always like to say in my business that uh, we're trying to be masters in 19th century technology, because that's where this all started. Engineers and application scientists at Olympus NDT have developed a sophisticated light-based device that can analyze samples for their chemical content. So I'm here at the USS Constitution Museum because they have a small cannon, a howitzer, and they're very curious about what is the composition of the metal that makes up the cannon. Uh, old Ironsides, USS Constitution, is right outside our windows here, the oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world. Well, we have this piece here from our collection. We think that it was made by Paul Revere in 1798. And we'd really like to know more about it, especially what it's made out of. So here I have our handheld x-ray fluorescence instrument, and I'm going to do a test. So within a couple of seconds, we can already see that it's about 82% copper, 11% tin, 6% lead, and a little bit of iron. So basically brass. Using electromagnetic energy as a probe, scientists continue to find innovative ways to explore the inner structure of the atom and the materials made out of these atoms. In the century since electrons were first discovered, chemists have used the properties of electrons to study the structure of our world and worlds far away. Today, scientists are using the powerful connection between light and electrons to explore molecules and atoms across our galaxy. With the knowledge of atomic and electronic structure, chemists can understand the properties and patterns of elements that comprise our world. 